Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. And uh, it's time to start tearing this sweet bike down. So yeah, let's go over all the tools and things that I've gathered up and what we're gonna be using to disassemble. Kinda go left to right here. I've got a couple flathead screwdrivers for the uh, derailers, things like that. Most everything on them is that's adjustment wise or disassembly would be a flathead screwdriver. Got a couple park 32 millimeter and then a 32 millimeter uh, for the headset disassembly. Uh, I've got for the crank disassembly, I've got a 15, just a 15 millimeter socket wrench. I've got my crank puller and then a little crescent wrench to go along with that. Uh, I've got an 8, 9, 10, three way, which most of the pinch bolts, things like that are all eight millimeters I believe. Got my DT spoke key. Got a park chain tool, a five and a six millimeter Allen wrench or hex key. Got my pedal wrench and then I've got a couple tools here to actually remove the bottom bracket. So we got our fixed cup, 36 millimeter. I've got a little pin spanner for the uh, non-drive adjustment cup side and I've got a pin spanner here for the the uh, lock ring on the bottom bracket so I think this should be uh, all the tools other than um, some things to clean and polish and everything else um, all right so the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this chain I'm just going to push one of the pins out it's going to Push this thing out. We're not going to go all the way, just enough to where we can pull the chain apart. There's still a little nub there, so we can connect it back together. So I'm going to clean this chain up. I may or may not reuse it. Uh, I've got a somewhere in my parts stuff. I've got an old Regina chain that's uh, pretty slick. This one's a. I think this is a Cetus chain, um, which is decent, pretty common for this era, time frame or whatever. So may reuse it, I'll clean it up either which way, but if I can find my super sweet Regina chain, I'm gonna use that one instead. Uh, not really going in any kind of specific order, but what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna go ahead and break this loose now so I can kind of using the wheel to hang on to and the handlebars to I'm going to go ahead and break loose this headset. So we've got our 32 millimeter flat wrench and then our 32 millimeter top. And so we're just going to basically break that loose. So it's all loose there. So we it's just hand tight. So once I go ahead and pull to get the stem broke loose, then I can just pull those pieces out there. So we're going to go ahead and break this stem loose. Um, that actually looks like it's an aluminum bolt. Uh, anyways, we'll see how, how difficult this is going to be. Get that thing fully engaged. So sometimes these bolts, if this, you know, this thing is, uh, there's no telling how long it's been in here. Some bikes, depending on how it's been stored and the weather the bike was ridden in, things like that, it can be, they really get stuck in here. If we're lucky, we'll pull this up just a bit. And then a lot of times you can just, yeah, there we go. So I'm holding the front wheel and it's, we've got some movement there. So that's a good sign that this one's gonna be easy to remove. Typically what I'll do is just take this out about maybe a quarter inch or so and uh, I just push that in there so there's a wedge system that's down inside of there and that broke loose fairly easy. Typically it's not that easy. Sometimes you have to maybe give this a little smack and it'll break the little wedge loose in there and then even then still sometimes this aluminum stem in this steel generally a chromoly steel steer tube that those can fuse together, especially if there wasn't enough grease put in initially with this wheel stem. Uh, so 
this should just come kind of twisting and lifting so there we go that's actually looks pretty good a lot of times you'll I mean you can see there's a little bit of rust there but that's plenty liberal amount of grease in there so that kind of saved us so yeah this is a this is a really nice stem just looking at it it's uh, I believe it's got a like a wedge system in here um, so there's no I don't know I don't know if I'll take that apart I'll probably pull the bolt and clean everything up but I'm, I don't know if I'm necessarily need to pull the bars all the way out but we'll go ahead and clean all this up uh, you know here in a bit okay so I've got this just sort of propped in there for now just to hold it in place uh, so we'll go ahead and pull the wheels pull the wheels out and then I'm going to uh, I don't have the right cone wrenches or freewheel tools so I'm going to go up to the shop and get the the uh, cone and lock nut and the freewheel loose and then we'll continue on to these wheels uh, in the meantime uh, we'll probably go ahead and disconnect these the uh, brakes So I'll get in close on this so we can see what we're doing. All right, so we're just gonna disconnect the brakes there so that the cable's basically loose. That's our little quick release. Get this little cable tip off of here. And we can just pull our cable out. Um, I'll probably end up disassembling these the calipers you know to get everything clean but um, basically it's you know just like most everything else on here that you've got this the bigger inner nut adjusts you know to get all your the play out of the two arms once you get that in place you hold one wrench and then you got your 10 I think that's a maybe a 12 maybe 13 millimeter and then this the outer acorn nut is a 10 millimeter uh, so what you would do you know to break these loose or you, know, you put your wrench on there and then hold this nut in place back that nut off and then you can disassemble I may not get too showing you know we might let's we'll see what we got time wise uh, but you basically got a five millimeter hex key there to remove this um, but I'm going to go ahead and take the both cables out so I can just set aside the handlebars and everything. All right, so before I uh, get the pull these off all the way, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unwrap these bars. Which this this whole this, this whole bar wrapping job and uh, it does have some pretty cool finishing tape there. But I, don't, I mean, this may somebody may have had some clip on arrow bars or something just because there's such a gap there and then I don't know one thing the positioning of these brakes they should be up here quite a bit higher and typically I'll put a straight edge on the bottom of the uh, of the um, handlebar there and you can see usually what I'm trying to shoot for is getting the edge of that it's the same where it just touches basically that plane there so they need to be probably somewhere up in here um, yeah that seems like that would be super uncomfortable I don't know for me anyways it would be so uh, yeah I'll go and just we're gonna go ahead and pull this tape all the way off and then from there I'm gonna I'll pull the pull the Pull the bars out and uh, just get that all disassembled so this is going pretty easy here it's not really leaving any sticky residue so that's always a good always a good sign so got the rear brake and the front brake disconnected um, so to get these out normally you would have these hoods on here um, but you can basically do the same thing as a workaround 
So we've got, I'm just going to pull that. There's a slotted part here where that cable just slides through. A little pocket up here where that barrel just sits into. And then just basically push down on it and then you can pull that out. There we go. So you can see that little piece in there. That's how basically you would install the new cable. You just kind of work it in and then you can twist that piece, flip it up and you're good to go. Uh, one thing I was noticing on this particular cable on the end, it's missing the, it's kind of a bigger ferrule. So I'll have to search around in my parts, see if I have one that's that size. Um, but I think I'm going to probably for sure replace these brake cables. They're pretty kind of cracked and haggard and stuff. Um, so to remove the actual brake lever, rather than, you know, most modern stuff, it's got a hex key uh, that goes like along the side. This and we're just going to take our 8 millimeter three-way little socket tool and loosen that up and from there we can that will come right on out of there um, you know honestly I don't really necessarily need to pull these off I'll probably just leave them on for now and I'm definitely going to reposition them you know raise them up a little bit higher but I'll clean these bars up you know mainly the parts that you see this parts all still pretty pretty clean as far as the actual bar itself it's not bad uh, pull our front one out here it's up and out sometimes if you work that to where the smallest portion is and you can just pull it right out but it's uh, steel it's a basic where are we at here? It's just a basic brake cable end. You know, Campy has their own little style, uh, which I don't know. I may use some Campy cables or just some basic stainless steel replacement cables there, but I'm saving these cables with all the end ferrules and everything. All right, so we got our bars just kind of in there, so. Go ahead and remove that, set it aside. Now we can move into uh, getting the headset disassembled here. It's previously had broken this loose, so it's all just going to come apart by hand now. So we've got our top nut. It's boogered up a little. I, honestly, I think I may have another campy top nut in my stash and then we've got two washers here one uh, that's just a plain washer and that one had a little tooth on it there's a yeah this fork doesn't have any kind of little notch or anything some of them do looks like they had to basically grind that off in order to get this on here and then we've got our I don't know, let's back up just a bit because one thing I noticed is I was kind of messing with this bike. If I tighten this pretty tight, um, I noticed there was a little little bit of a notch right there, kind of in the center. And sometimes that can happen if the bike gets ridden with a, maybe the headset's a little loose at some point and then those bearings will uh, basically just pound a little ding into the the bearing race uh, either in the either in the cup portion or the actual bearing race so we'll inspect that if we need to I'll I've got a couple tricks we can do so we not, don't necessarily have to replace uh, any components all right so we got our fork out there you got a the bearing race there and then the set of bearings all right so just got this the top race and the crown race cleaned up and uh, it's maybe a I see a couple pits in the 
maybe the back side of the uh, race there but the the cup races look pretty good just I kind of did a quick cleanup but um, yeah I'll take all the headset pieces and everything bottom bracket hubs up to the shop and I'll clean all that up in the solvent tank um, but yeah it's I'd say everything overall so far looks like it's in pretty uh, pretty good condition next I'm gonna go ahead and undo the cables from the derailers I've already went ahead and pulled off the little end the crimped on end caps and probably just going to reuse uh, maybe maybe not I don't know debating on reusing these old cables here so rear one's got a little bit of a bend to it in it there all right so again everything on here is pretty well eight millimeter steel attaches the same way when i say eight millimeter i mean just a standard eight millimeter socket type bolt there you know it just sits in like so This has got a bolt and then there's a little nut there that goes on the back. So I'm just going to put these together just to minimize the chance of losing any small pieces here. pull these cranks off. I'm going to pull the, uh, the pedals off first. Hopefully these aren't going to be too difficult. Oh, not too bad. At least that side anyways. One thing that's important about using lots of grease uh, when you're assembling a bike is, you know, you never know. Like in the case of this bike, some 30-something, 40-something years later, somebody's going to be pulling it apart or working on it, you know, and it's super easy for that stuff to be uh, just seized up in there. It kind of helps as well with having really nice components, nice materials. Yeah, and this thing's a little tight, you know, if we was doing some kind of the spin test that everybody likes to do. Uh, uh, so what we're gonna do next is go ahead and remove these, the spindle bolts. It's got my 15 millimeter socket there. I think that's gonna fit. There we go. It's a pretty tight fit because this is most uh, cranks that have a a bolt in there are 14 millimeters, but Campy's are 15. So that wasn't too bad. Wasn't too tight. Should be a Got the bolt, and then there's a little washer in there. Right, let's get that little washer out of there. There we go. And you can see that there's the threaded portion, and then the, the actual spindle. Uh, 
So we're gonna go ahead and got our little crank puller here. Go ahead and thread that on in. my little crescent wrench to get that nice and snug. It's very important that you cinch that down because you don't want to be, that's not tight, it'll pull the threads right out of that crank arm. So hopefully this comes off nice and smooth. There we go. There we go. Wasn't even a problem. So, yeah. Kind of dirty, not too bad. So the chain ring sizes, we got a 42 tooth on the uh, small ring, 52 on the big ring. And it's just a standard, um, you know, five millimeter hex on the one side and then there's a little split, pretty common chain ring style bolt there. Non-drive side. Now we're ready to uh, break this lock ring free. So I'm going to spray a little WD 40 on here just to hopefully uh, accelerate this process. Keep from boogering up this uh, the little splines there in the lock ring. Uh, normally, I would rather have a like a six-sided lock ring that engages into all of those. And I have one somewhere. I think it's in my kind of my tool storage. Um, all I have is this three, which is better than a single one, but. Uh, all right, so before I go any further, one thing I need, we need to talk about here is the fact that this is an Italian bottom bracket. You can tell just by how it is. <laughs> no, but seriously, there's a, it'll say on here, typically, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, let's clear that off a little better. Okay, so it's pretty much a guarantee that any old Italian frame with campy components is going to have Italian threads in the bottom bracket. But the way you can be for sure, if you look right here, it says 36 by 24. Uh, so what that basically means that the actual inside diameter of the threaded portion of the bottom bracket is slightly larger than in, say compared to an English thread. Um, so the threads on the non-drive side are just the same. So we're going to turn this lock ring uh, basically just like a normal, you know, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey 
So we're going to turn it counterclockwise there. And then the, uh, that's to break the lock ring off. And then the actual cup will thread out uh, counterclockwise as well. Um, so typically on your drive side, on an English thread, the threads are going to be backwards. Um, Italian thread, it's the same way. So we're going to turn it counterclockwise to remove the, uh, the fixed cup on the drive side there. So let's uh, see how difficult this thing is going to be to get off of here. It's pretty tight. There we go. It wasn't too bad. Broke it loose without scratching anything or marring up the pieces here. So I sprayed my WD on there and so sometimes the threads inside here on the frame are going to be, they can get a little dried out. So I'll hit that one more time. Just get it. Sometimes if you got one that's really sticky, uh, you know, WD-40 is okay, but something that's a better penetrating oil, like a PB Blaster works really well on these old, old uh, bikes that have been sitting for many years. Um, so sometimes, you know, if you're just starting to, you know, strip out the, ball, you know, the pieces or whatever, sometimes it's better to just flood it with some penetrating oil and step away from it for a few hours and kind of regather and um, try not to get frustrated because Sometimes it can be frustrating. So got my little park tool here and see if this is gonna, oh yeah, the gauge is just nice. Yeah. So, so far, this bike's been pretty easy to pull apart. I haven't seen, if, I haven't tried to pull the C-post yet, so sometimes those can be stuck. But just judging on the way this bike was assembled, other than the wheels and the way the brake hoods were on, or the brake levers were mounted on the bars, everything's pretty, somebody did a, took their time and did a really nice job putting this bike together. Looks like the, uh, typically one thing on a threaded, bottom bracket shell like this. Um, whenever you're initially assembling, you know, and on a lot of these older frames or even current frames that are, uh, somebody's made in a, you know, done their own frame building or whatever, it, you typically have to, uh, you know, after the bike's been welded, painted, everything else, take your, uh, your, your taps or your threat, your chasing and they do is call it the chasing and facing the bottom bracket there. So what they'll do is take a set of a tool that holds these two threads in a parallel plane and then just run your tap back through, clean up all the threads. And then once those are good, take another, your facing tool and make sure that the face of this, uh, the shell is nice and clean and parallel to the other side so everything's square. That's going to give you the best performance and best longevity of your components. So that all looks pretty good inside there. It's a little dirty. Um, but typically what you'll find here in these old uh, these old campy bottom brackets, you're going to have the bearing. There's going to be a plastic dust cover inside of there. There's so much, there's like a big lip of grease on this other side. Soak it up a little here. All right, so I've got this, got a big lip of old grease, kind of picking it off there, but that's what's holding that in. Move this over just a little. Carefully pull out. So there's the one non-drive side bottom bracket, which I, 
uh, that grease is pretty old, but it's surprisingly uh, pretty, pretty good color and everything. It's not all black in there. Get this. <laughs> that looked like that was a symbol, and there was a little chunk of grease that was overhanging, and it kind of turned into a petrified over the years or something. There we go. There's our vintage campy grease. Hasn't seen the light of day in forever. So note that as I took this out, the spindle is in. If you're sitting on your bike and your frame is invisible and you're looking down, you can read the so that's how it's going to design to go inside the frame, just like so. Go ahead and set that aside. Okay, so we have there's a kind of a two-piece dust cap uh, rests up against the bearing. So you can see how clean basically that grease was. And I'll show you another little thing on the cups here that was nice with these old campy bottom brackets here in a minute, but uh, we're going to attempt to break the, the fixed cup loose. Um, I'll probably just pull out the uh, the dust cover with it, but you can see most of these old Italian frames, uh, there was a, basically a hole, and that's just to let water, you know, it's, water can still get through there and then basically drain out there at the very lowermost uh, portion of the, of the bike. Uh, so, going to switch this over to this side and we'll uh, alright so typically you know a standard English would go that way but we're going to be going counterclockwise to loosen this thing and usually I like to do I'll just take my little rubber mallet here I'm going to hold that in place all right, so what I'm going to do initially with this hand, I'm just holding that nice and square up against the frame. Give it a couple little smacks here. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Um, if we had to get into a more aggressive, this was tighter than that. What I'll do sometimes is uh, you can do it actually with the spindle still in there, um, but it's basically you, know, you have that your tool on the flats, and I've seen guys where they take like a chunk of wood with the hole cut in it, the size of the spindle, and then it basically holds it on there, and you can use your spindle bolt to just hold that wood, hold this square up against the uh, tool. Um, I've done variations of that and you know lots of other stuff but I'll try this just holding that holding that up and just kind of giving it a quick little smack with the wrench just make sure you hold it on there nice and square so you don't round off your tool or the uh, the flats there on the on the cup but yeah so far this bike's been a pretty much been a dream scenario to work on. Alright, so we'll pull this out with our Got a little crack there, but it's all good. Yeah, it's kind of. I think it's starting to. Oh, well, it's all good still. That's just the grease there on the lip. But yeah, that's still still really clean for something of this age. Yeah, so this is what I was going to tell you about. You can see it. Look, it's kind of like a. There's like some 
corkscrew threads there in the center and so what that does there's no rubber seal that actually touches like most of your modern uh, bottom brackets or cartridge type it's basically just a is that spindle turns forward it forces grease and water out on both sides so that kind of keeps you know it's kind of cool but it obviously you know works because something this old I don't I would I would assume that this probably has never been just judging by the looks of it never been rebuilt and that's you know again I don't know what kind of miles I don't know the history of this bike I don't know how many miles are on it but you know the the bottom end of it was pretty dirty so that's pretty clean inside of there all things considered all right so we're getting down to it now pull the brake off here all that's left are going to be the seat post Get this old bottle cage off um, I've got one that's I think I'm going to use that I've got in my stash that's pretty pretty cool vintage style bottle cage these are pretty simple basically both just a uh, friction type shifter got kind of a little washer piece there a little sticky there we go probably soak that piece with some WD-40 that side it's stuck on there pretty good and then I'll carefully work it off I don't want to be scratching up the frame or damaging any parts there all right so we'll notice how I left the seat post on for the very last bit because I don't want to clamp this frame in anywhere other than the uh, I did, I did shoot a little bit of WD-40 in there, but uh, we're good. It's coming right out. So I took the wheel up to the shop, um, or the wheels, to remove the freewheel here. So this one, particular one, it's a Millard freewheel. Uh, there's several others that are similar to this that have the two little notches there, just on, you can see them on either side of the cone. So that's the tool we're going to use. It's, uh, this particular one, it's a Park Tool FR-2 model. So. Um, some free wheels they'll fit in really easily um, but even this one is a pretty tight fit um, but even still you want to use uh, if you have a quick release axle like this I like to just use the skewer to hold it in place and in this case I actually use the skewer to fully press it in and get it nice and engaged there I'd use the actual cam lock to get that tool to wedge itself into the into the two little grooves there so got in there it's kind of hard to see but it's all the way flush fully engaged so we're ready to uh just going to put it in the vise here and then turn the wheel counterclockwise to break that break or basically unthread the free wheel um so it's really important to you know once you get it broke loose so 
I just broke it loose there. Once it's loose, back the skewer off a little bit. If you keep turning it, you'll destroy your probably the bearings, the hub, and the skewer. So, uh, is that free wheels backing off it's going to expand away from the hub so um, at this point it was nice and loose so I just let the hub that skewer just drop through there um, so yeah worked out really well in this situation so we got the got the free wheel off and now we're ready to uh, break the uh, cones loose so one of these campy super record rear hubs we're going to need basically two 14 millimeter cone wrenches there uh, so I had one at home but I had to go you know that's one thing I had to go to the shop to get borrow the other one so basically just squeeze them together there and that thing's broke loose the front uses a 13 on the inner cone and then it's a 16 millimeter on the lock nut and the lock nut on the front is it's uh, towards the outside so I just used a regular hand wrench there all right, so I've got my wheels there. I've got the cones and everything broke loose from the shop. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the tires off and everything and break this wheel down before I disassemble the hubs. Um, but the, uh, I'm going to keep the spokes grouped together as far as the rear wheel separately and then the uh, left and right sides here on the, on the rear wheel. Ugh. Yeah, it's pretty old tire. It's kind of falling apart as I'm taking it off here. So this is kind of some further evidence of whoever built this wheel. These spokes look like they're a little bit on the long side, protruding past the, uh, the nipples there. So I don't know. I'm going to disassemble this and probably going to uh, recut these spokes just a little bit on the old Phil Wood machine uh, as well. So. Okay, so just a couple observations before I start uh, taking this wheel apart. Um, the spokes all look really good. A lot of times that you'll see the chain can high side over the free wheel or your cassette or whatever and gouge up the, these spokes that are on the furthest edge out. But everything's really good and I think these will clean up really nice. It's really nice double butted uh, 2.0 or uh, 14, 15, 14 gauge spoke. So it's two millimeters on the ends and then 1.8 millimeters in the center. Um, anyway, this uh, this particular wheel, it's I'll probably just relace it. How this is as far as the actual spoke pattern, which is I mean you can't do anything about it. It's a three cross uh, pattern, which is pretty pretty normal. I think this is a 36 spoke wheel, um, but some things as far as it's it's uh, laced as in a symmetrical pattern. So basically what that means is that if you look at your, this, the direction of this spoke, its elbows, the elbow is out. Um, so in relation to, if you kind of look at it from the side, it's going that way versus the ones on the inside that are going that direction. So if we look at our spokes uh, here on the other, this flange, they're basically uh, the same setup. So the spokes elbow in here are going that direction. The spokes elbow out on the outside are going this towards me direction. Um, typically what I do on a rear wheel with a rim brake, I'll do the uh, what they call an asymmetrical. Um, so basically all the elbows out sides are all going to be coming this direction so 
it, it would be basically what they call a mirror image type. So the inside spokes are all going one direction, outside spokes are going another direction. But like I say, I'm just gonna, when I build this back up, I don't wanna, you know, create extra little indentions on this hub. So it honestly, it doesn't really matter big picture wise, but um, just throwing out some uh, basic trivia. But then the other thing, so I, we got our the Campanolo logo is right here. I'm not sure how visible that is. Um, but if I take my thumb, let's see if we can get this in focus. Here, if we're looking at the actual outside of the rim, typically that's where we would want our valve stem hole to be. Um, but in this case, the valve stem hole is right here. And if we focus in on where that's looking at the hub, this is just kind of in a random place there where the little oil cover thing is. So I want this to be facing the Campanolo logo. I know that's kind of a OCD trivial thing as well, but you know, that's kind of a sign of a quality built wheel is just little attention to details like that. So uh, anyway, with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and tear this wheel apart and uh, yeah, go from there. Keep the, the spokes on the drive side will be, normally they're two millimeters shorter than the non-drive side spokes. Uh, so longer, shorter. So got to keep those separated. Um, the inside, outside, those are roughly the same. But um, yeah, I'm just going to detension, give each spoke maybe a, a turn or so at a time and just keep going around the wheel until they're all really loose. Uh, just not to add any extra additional stress to the rim. Uh, which is in pretty good shape. Uh, overall, this wheel is, looks really good. There's no dings or not a lot of uh, wear on the brake tracks or anything like that. So, yeah, let's go ahead and pull it apart. All right, so I got it down to one spoke left here. Two spokes when got away from me. Pull the rim away from there. <clears throat> uh, so what I'm gonna do first is free up all these, all the drive side spokes. And you know, honestly, I'm not even sure these are uh, if they're measured. I know they're all long. Um, I'll measure. I'll probably just recalculate the whole thing and um, rather than just assuming and cutting some off the uh, ends of these spokes but I'm going to keep them separated just in case they're all just the a little long on each end so if I can just cut off like three millimeters or so something like that I'll just do that uh, Let's measure one up here real quick. Pull one out of the non-drive side and see if it's a little longer. If not, then I'm not even gonna worry about it and I'll just pull them all out. Because they're gonna need to be resized anyways. Yeah, no, they're, they look like, it looks like it's a little longer there. So we'll keep these separated. Alright, so we got our 
back wheel fully disassembled here and I've got these spokes left and right side separated. This is just going to be on the rear. Um, fronts are going to be all together because it's they're basically the same distance between the flanges and the in you know to out the lock nuts there essentially the outside dimensions. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah this uh, is pretty dirty and grungy but man that thing feels that's uh, you know one thing with the Campanolo stuff is it I mean it just does not get any smoother than that. It feels still you know as neglected as this is. Doesn't look like it's seen a ton of miles but it's pretty dirty but it's still super smooth so I think this cleaning all this up and overhauling it should go really smooth. Um, so I'm going to get the uh, basically the front wheel torn down. Um, we'll go ahead and do a quick run through on this. The, I'm not going to do the front wheel just because the it's essentially the same thing as far as to tear this down. The bearings in here are quarter inch, they're three sixteenths in the front wheel. It's a 10 millimeter axle approximately versus a nine millimeter axle on the front wheel or the, the front hub there. So um, yeah, let's pull this hub apart and then I think we're going to be pretty much done with all of our disassembly here. Had this at the shop and I've broken this uh, non-drive side apart so it's basically any cup and cone style hub with loose ball bearings you got your basically your lock nut so you know these are you got the two flats there it's 14 millimeters there's a little groove in the axle so you got a one keyed washer there and then we've got our cone here and I'm pretty positive that every all the components on this are good but if you have a you know a hub that you're spinning and it feels kind of notchy you always want to just check this track here where the bearing rotates and look for pitted out um, you know if the, if the hub is ever ridden loose it, those bearings will smack up against the uh, the race there and just form little pits and once you get a few pits in there it just eats up everything and you'll need to replace typically you'll need to replace the cone itself and you'll need to replace the bearings so at this point we can just pull our axle out the bearings will just uh, come out there Got one stuck in the middle but you can see it's the same as with the bottom bracket the green you know even though the outside of this hub is pretty dirty that it's pretty clean inside of there I mean as you can see from the axle here you, know, you still see the kind of that tan colored it was a little lighter more of a I don't know kind of a cream khaki colored I guess originally uh, so we should have these quarter inch ball bearings we should have uh, should be nine per side here so it looks like they're all out um, you know so another thing is just popping these little dust caps out I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just going to uh, clean all this up. Um, I'll take it up to the our solvent tank and just totally degrease all this. Yes, yeah, so we got 18 ball bearings. You know, and I'll double check that this is cinched down. But I'm just going to leave that side all intact since really everything's so clean. It just needs a basic flush and regreased and reassembly. Um, but essentially that's how you're going to disassemble it. Just make sure you keep all your bits and pieces together. Um, you know, if, if you're not super familiar with the bearing sizes, you might keep them separate because the, these are, like I say, a quarter inch. Front hubs use a 3 16 which is slightly smaller. Um, 
you know, if it's that may be confusing to you, you might just keep everything separated. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm going to um, take all this stuff up to the shop, bottom bracket headset and all the bearing pieces and bits and then probably here I'll just clean up all the other the derailers and the brake calipers and all that uh, so yeah that's I think we've covered quite a bit in this uh, part two and um, yeah stay tuned we'll see you guys in part three here pretty soon and uh, yeah thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time